Clare and the proposed one match bans to both Peter Duggan and um, and Rory Hayes. So what were your thoughts when you saw this come through? Um, so I was a bit surprised to be honest with you because obviously you know those those uh, clips were highlighted. Um, I suppose in isolation, in the sense of there was no, there was all Clare clips, there was no Limerick clips, there wasn't much balance to it. But I didn't think they'd react as they have. Um, they've it looks like it's just a direct reaction to that part of the Sunday game where they're talking about those clips. Um, it's a funny one because John Keenan refereed the match the way he did, earned an awful lot of applause as as a result of that, and now. You know they're essentially going back on his performance, if you know what I mean. And basically, from what I gather, is saying that he should have, you know, seen these incidents at the time and should have dealt with them at the time. Um, yeah, but it just when you look, when you go back through, like even the the Ian Galvin kind of, I don't know what you call it, it a situation or it was a bit of a farce around him. The fact, you know, that his case was so uh, convoluted, I suppose, and that he couldn't get off for that for that uh, for that Limerick game in the in the round robin. And now you're looking at it looking it looks a bit like Claire been pinpointed somewhat. But if you look at this, like they're coming back, they're coming off an extra time to defeat the Munster final. That's hard in itself to get over. Like that's a hard thing to to bridge that gap. And now they're going to be missing two of their best players. Um Duggan has been unbelievable since he came back. Rory Hayes probably had a tough day at the at the office in the Munster final, but outside of that, has been absolutely brilliant. And they have like they have a good squad. Can they potentially replace these two guys and get over the line? It's going to be difficult. Yeah, Sean O'Sullivan says here, if a red can be appealed, then a ref's decision isn't final. Clare lads playing dirty can have no complaints for getting clipped. So I think, like, so we talked through it last week, and I suppose if we're to just recap it, you can't really complain with Peter Duggan getting the, his red card for, or sorry, his re retrospective red card for what he did with Sean Finn. Now, look, we went I'm not over sure it, if it is, I'm not hundred percent sure if it is that if that's what he's been cited for, or if it's the, it's, it's the punch potentially the punch that he's been cited for. Yeah, I would have seen that he went like that against Willow Donahue. I I see nothing in that really. But you look, I'm not really a person who's that mad on red cards. But anyway, that I wouldn't see too much in that. And then the other one, I suppose you you can, Rory Hayes can't complain again. He was being held by Seamus Flanagan a bit like the way Sean Finn was holding Peter Duggan. But still, if it's a red card. You can't complain too much. But, I mean, the question I'd ask is, you know, these aren't the only incidents after games ever shown on TV. Why has the committee decided to pick up these clips and not other ones? Like, go back over the years. Austin Gleeson shouldn't have played in the 2017 All-Ireland Final. But we all sort of collectively agreed, yeah, let's sweep this one under the carpet. You know, the, for the helmet pull yeah. on Luke Mead in the All-Ireland Semi-Final. And I think Adrian Tuhi was very lucky to also play in the final that, that same year. You know, time and time again, we've seen ones that have been swept under the carpet. Like last year, Keane Lynch did the judo flip on Tim O'Mahony and there was no retrospective ban. I think everyone's happy to let's move on from this. Uh, the same with Aaron Galan last year in the Munster final. There was no retrospective ban. So why all of a sudden these guys? So like people are slating the Sunday game and all that kind of stuff, uh, which is, you know, a national obsession to do. But at the same time, it's not like these were the first clips ever put out there. Why did they act on these ones? Yeah, that that's that is really the big one. There's been so many things happen down through the year, down through the years, um, that people have shown on social media and the people have, that they've been that's been highlighted on the Sunday game as well, and nothing has been done as a result. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It does. It looks very uh, reactionary, shall we say? And then just like playing devil's advocate here, but. You know, if we we pull up some sort of clip or stills of you know five or six things that happened on a Monday morning, like, or, and we put them out on social media and they get a lot of traction, people start talking, people say X, Y, and Z. Does that mean you know have we the potential to get a player banned? I, like, it just seems a bit strange. And can I just say something about the footage that was shown on the Sunday game? Um, because I do think there's been a couple of misconceptions around it. I like I thought what you know what Brendan Cummins in particular what he said was was quite fair. I didn't think he had a go at anyone or anything like that. It's just the fact that the footage that they showed was I think was unfair. Um and if they're gonna show a couple of pieces of pieces of action on one side that are controversial, it's not as if there weren't ones ones there on the other side that they could have showed it showed as well. Or even showed, you know, various things maybe that Limerick have done in previous games. But I don't think there was anything that was said 
that was particularly unfair. And I think it's been mentioned that there was biased commentary. Obviously, look, pointing the finger at Shane Dowling. I honestly don't think he, he said anything um, that was in any way biased about those incidents, to be honest. If you go back through what he said, he said very little. And even Brendan Cummins, who went into it a bit more, like he didn't say, you know, we need to nail this guy or we need to nail that guy. You know, that wasn't said. And can I just say as well, they're, they're commentators. Like they have to comment on these things. And I'm sure it was probably a case where the gun was probably put to their head where it was like, you know, we need to talk about this. They talked about them. I don't think they went in really hard or anything like that. They just said, we prefer not to see this. Um, and it's not as if, it's just that they made a beeline for probably three clear incidents and there was no balance on the other side. Yeah, at the same time, like, you know, I've worked in there a bit uh, this summer and I do think there's autonomy with the with the pundits. So I would imagine that they they can push to, to look at the, the clips that they want to. So I, I think there's a bit of that, but... I suppose, you know, and you see some of the clips flying around about, you know, should Limerick players have also been cited? So there was that ruck that uh, Willow Donoghue, and was it was the one where Tony Kelly won possession turn and scored that brilliant point. And there was a bit of a clear out of Shane, of Shane O'Donnell by Seamus Flanagan. Now, I think if you're going to cite the other ones, that's one that you could probably be looking at doing um, a suspension on. And then the other one involving Cahill Malone and Seamus Flanagan that was flying around. I don't see too much in that. But there was an incident a while back where, other pundits in football were talking about the danger of the headlock. So I, th I think if it was someone on high that was deciding it, that they, they would have decided on the basis, well, here's another headlock. We have to stay very heavy on this. So I think it's, it's more down to the individual pundits on the night deciding. And, you know, as far as I know as well, it's not like Shane Dowling was just picked for this particular night um, just ahead of the game. These are decided, like it's decided weeks and weeks beforehand who goes in for certain shows. The schedule is pre-done beforehand. Now, you could predict that, um, Limerick were going to be in the Munster final, that's fair enough. But I think that's just kind of how it went. But like those, those Limerick ones, do you think the either of those on Seamus Flanagan, for example, should have been red cards? So, yeah, it's all taken in the context of these being deemed as one match bans now, you know, the clear ones. And if, if you're saying that they are all going to be one match bans, well, then you could be handing out one match bans to five or six other players. Um, I think you're the same as me. I don't really, I don't particularly want to see anybody missing games. I don't want to see anybody sent off during games. But if you're looking at one, you have to look at the other, re realistically. that's And it just looks like this is kind of coming in a vacuum almost. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's it's almost like players are, Claire players are the only players that, you know, do anything on a pitch. God, like... You, you really can't, you can't get away with anything with the amount of cameras that are going around on a pitch now. But God, people, players are going to have to be so careful if, even if they, you know they don't give away a free during a game, they're looking at the potential of a red card or something um, thereafter. I just think that this week is going to be really fascinating from um, several points of view. Number one, with with the you know with these infractions, shall we say, where's the, there's a total information vacuum. Like, we don't even know, we don't even, I don't even know if, if Claire have been, you know, given notice of these indiscretions or whatever. Wait, like, how do you know when, you should know when the case has been here, been heard. You should know whether they're appealing. All this should go through official channels. You've seen it with the DRA as well, when you're a journalist trying to get information about a DRA appeal. It's basically like, if you know somebody that's involved with the county board or you're waiting for word back can you give me a text when you hear like there's such an information vacuum as well we, we the fact that we we're not even 100 percent sure what the instances are that these players have been brought up over it, it it could all be dealt with uh an awful lot better shall we say and over the coming days you've got they're probably I presume they're going to appeal you'd imagine they're going to appeal because it's not a round robin game that's of no consequence it's an all-earning quarter final where it's you know, win or bust, really. And then you have the scenario of potentially, more than likely, it's going to go down to the DRA and it could be a, a Friday night here and, and we and Claire won't know whether they have potentially the two lads available or not until the early hours of uh, of Saturday morning. So, yeah, it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Lowen, there's one thing for sure, and I mean this as a compliment, he will create a siege mentality because they've had to create siege mentalities before in his own playing days and even in the last couple of years when it it would have definitely seemed that even some of his own were going against him and playing against him. So no better man to create a siege mentality and come out fighting regardless of whether they have the two lads or not.
Yeah, uh, Flash says Clare can reap what they sow. They were perfectly fine with highlighting incidents when it was Limerick. Literally every Clare person pre Monster final was talking about how Limerick uh, were lucky with Reds. Sir Guy, who smiles on Twitter, says two Clare players got retrospective bans. When was the last last time a Limerick player got a retrospective ban and you're whinging that you've been picked on? Catnap says, suck it up, Claire. Play on the edge. Rely on the ref swallowing the whistle. Deal with the consequences. It's not the fault of the Sunday game. That's what about uh, deflecting from the issue. Carlo Halloran, GZ Limerick lads are very touchy on this. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan, are Claire famous for playing dirty? Does Brian Cody wear a cap? Um, let's see. 1998 all over again. Can't uh, real lads in talking about Galway. Would be absolutely delighted if Wexford dumped them out on Saturday, says Flash. And catnap is not a good solution. People want to see a free-flowing, combative game. Ref misses big calls. Game for the ages. Everyone happy. Major incidents dealt with retrospectively. Yeah, I don't know. It just it felt like the game was, even though there's the odd tackle that goes in over the top, it just felt like to me like this was played in pretty much the right spirit. You're seeing players embrace after the game. You're seeing mentors of opposing teams congratulate players on the opposite team or commiserate them or whatever it just seemed like all fair is love and war and let's move on and like is a time-honored tradition in the ga let's sweep those incidents under the carpet because everyone lived to fight another day let's just move on i mean that's not the pc way to look at it but i feel like that's the the sort of the way that players and management want and most supporters want to look at it yeah, it's the common sense way, way to look at it, I, I would say. The thing about Yeah, but it's, well, ca- it's ca- the common sense not to look at the reality that some things did go over the edge, but so I suppose common, <laughs> common sense is a small bit of a stretch. Yeah, but, but just on the on some of the incidents, um, so say like when Gerald Hegarty was given a second jello in Ennis, uh, there was probably a bit of simulation involved there. In fairness, in all these incidents that we're talking about here, and probably one of the reasons why they didn't come to light on the days, you know, Willow Dunahoo didn't go down and lie down. Uh, Sean Finn didn't go down and lie down. I don't even know if Seamus Flanagan realised that a hurl hit his back. Shane O'Donnell, when he was, you know, kind of ran through by Flanagan, he he wasn't down on the ground for a couple of minutes after. They all just got up and went back at it again. And that's probably one of the main reasons why nothing was, was dealt with on the day. Um, and listen, you know yourself, you've been involved in various games. These, all, those sort of things happen in, you know, similar kind of things happen in every game, particularly at close quarters. Like, within club games, all that kind of stuff happens. You take a swipe back at a lad, he's pulling at you. It, it, it happens. Um, I just, it just looks like they've been focused on, uh, it's just been a, a clear heavy focus in this instance. And there's no point saying any different. It puts their season uh, in some jeopardy. If they have to play without these two guys, the one thing I would say is though, like if you if you flake a guy and you end up giving him a broken hand or something like that, there's no doubt but you deserve the retrospective action. But like even with Keenan Fahey, I, I, Richie Hogan or sorry Richie Reed, I should say, is fine after you know he was stood on by Keenan Fahey. But I don't think anyone across the country has any issue with a retrospective ban there. That's clear cut, and you know you're you're not trying to sully the name of the person, but that one was just clear cut. No, I'd agree with you there. If it's some, if it's something like that, like yeah, say even, uh, yeah, I don't want to bring up any incidents from the past, but things where where lads end up, end up, end up injured or in a cast or broken fingers, um, you know, broken foot or anything like that from a stroke or something like that, where there is clear intent in it, then I think you're probably going down, you're probably going down a different road. But just that someone there, sort of Flash says, he says I don't think the retrospective bans lessen John Keenan's performance and referees, um, those situations should have been dealt with, with by his umpires or by men on the sideline. Funny how the NS umpires could see, we'll, stop, we'll just stop there, but I definitely don't think it lessens, it does not lessen his performance and you cannot see everything that's going on with a game that's that helter skelter. I'd love to know, uh, you know, how much ground he even covered throughout the, the 90 plus minutes or whatever, and how much you have to see. It would literally need eyes, eyes in your head to see everything that was going on. And I have, I still stand over and think I t- thought he was a, it was a brilliant referee in performance, in fairness. And it, it, uh, it played into one of the best games I can remember seeing in my lifetime. Red Lad says, it's a yellow for an attempted swing and a player shouldn't matter if he went down. A Sully 180, if you swing a hurley like a side, a la Colin Lynch 1998, then you should face retrospective action. For more exclusive content, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.